This is a short clip from my video that's on BJJ Fanatics, so check it out. All right, so now we're going to cover the, the next uh, section of this is on the basic position for the grappling dummy. I put my uh, dummy in a A2 gi, A2 belt. I've taken off my tap because what I'm doing is not, um, I don't need the gi tap on. You can train however you want. You can train in your shorts, your t-shirt. Uh, it's not specific to, uh, this video is not specific to having a gi on. The reason I put a gi on the dummy uh, especially if you have a canvas dummy, is you may start sweating. And getting a nice, wet, sweaty canvas dummy is not my idea of, uh, of fun training. My grappling dummy is synthetic leather, so it's easy to clean. That's another benefit of uh, getting a synthetic, smooth surface dummy. It's easy to clean. So if you have other people using a dummy, um, it's, it's, you can be a little more hygienic and, and clean with it by just wiping down with a little uh, 10 to 1 bleach water, right? So anyways, what I want to do is I want to cover the eight positions that I'm going to go over in this video. If you're, if you're looking for things to be doing with your grappling them, right? In this beginning thing, I'm just going to walk through the eight positions and I'm not going to show you any like transitions um, to the positions. I'm just going to show you the actual positions and name them, what makes them um, those positions. So the first one is the guard, the bottom guard, uh, or the top guard. I'm in the, the, the way a, a match typically starts is it usually starts on the feet. Uh, and what'll happen is, uh, it'll either end up one person on the ground and one person standing up, or this person is, is pulled guard and we end up in a closed guard. For the sake of this video, we're going to end up in closed guard. So his feet are going to be crossed, right, like this, okay? So I put belt around here to, to help close it, but sometimes it, that doesn't work the best. So you, you'll you have to simulate this a little bit. You're in his closed guard. This is closed guard. His legs are above your hips, right? They're not down low, they're up high, right? And typically this person here, if his feet are crossed, his feet are crossed, it's working. He'll be grabbing my lapel, his hands will be fighting up on top in here, right? So this is closed, this is closed guard with his feet closed. Open guard, his feet are open. They may have him on your hip. He's keeping you away from his upper body. Your goal is to, uh, to move forward up to the top, uh, to the upper portion of his body to control him here. While there are submissions in the lower limbs, <clears throat> I'm not gonna get into those with the basic. Uh, I want you to get the fundamentals of moving up to the body where most of the submissions uh, take place. And in tournaments, there's not a lot that a white belt can do uh, with the legs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you moving to side control, right? This would be position number two. Now side control can look a number of different ways. Um, preferably, if I'm looking at my actual position that I want, is I want his arm up on my hip, and I want my arm under his head, I want this arm on the side of me, and I'm clasping like this, right? Like this. But if he's doing his job, if he's doing his job, he's gonna do, he's gonna have a frame across my face and a frame on my hip, right? And he's keeping his, usually they're keeping their knees in. This is one of the things you'll notice with working a, with a dummy, is if you, you need to actually um, think about this as a, a true two-part lesson. And this is where I think the, uh, the accelerated learning really comes into play. Because when you're working with a partner, um, that partner's thinking about their move, and I'm only thinking about my move. So if the move of the day is uh, moving from, from guard to side control, I'm only worried about going from guard to side control. The guy in the bottom is just thinking about, okay, he's just moving from my, I'm gonna, after he gets his five reps in, I'm gonna do my guard to side control. But when you're working with a dummy, you have to actually do the moves and the responses that the guy in the bottom would do. Meaning, once I pass in here, I have to put his arms in where I think uh, they should actually go. And if he's doing his job, he puts them here. He, he'll put a frame, this is a frame. He'll put a frame across my face and a frame on my hip, right? That prevents me from getting close to him, right? 
but this is side control. Side control can look a number of different ways. You can have um, your hands clasped like this. You can have both hands on one side. You're grabbing these, turning in here. You can have a hand over, trapping it this way. They all serve a, um, uh, a purpose. A hand on the inside in here prevents them from re-guarding, putting me back inside closed guard. Um, I, this hand here up here controls the upper body. <clears throat> but once I get from guard to side control, if we're looking at uh, competitive jiu-jitsu and IBJJF, I've just passed the guard and now I'm in side control. That's three points, all right? My next position I want to get into is another control position, all right? Control position here would be scarf. And the way scarf will look like, um, this is a little bit different than maybe uh, like a jiu-jitsu, uh, not jiu-jitsu, um, this is a little bit different than what you'll see maybe in judo. Judo, they'll have a scarf in this kind of position. The hand is around the head, neck, and shoulders, and usually it's grabbing their leg. They're still pulling up on the tricep here. In jiu-jitsu, a lot of times our scarf is this. We're cupping the deltoid or where the deltoid would be. We're grabbing the back of the, of the tricep and we're, we're really laying onto their rib, like where their floating rib is. If we're doing this right, we turn our toes up and we're, we're kind of elevating your, your, um, your butt off the ground just a little bit. Again, I need to do the correct move for this person on the bottom too. So this is a two part lesson. I need to know he's gonna typically have frames in here. If I have this, my next thing is to start going into submissions. But if he has this frame in place, what he does now is he take, he puts a, a kind of a roadblock in the way for me to actually get around. I have to do other techniques before I can actually submit him, right? And we'll get into this whole idea of uh, position, uh, the submission, and the ideas of, of, of understanding when the submission is, is um, more probable or highly, highly probable. Um, is when you have base posture structure. And right here, um, he has created uh, a good structure for himself for defense, right? This arm, not so much. Typically, this arm would want to be on the hip. But this is side, this is scarf, right? So this is position number three. Going back to position number two, we're going to move into position number four, right? So the next one is gonna be knee on belly. Some people call it knee on stomach, knee on belly, same thing, right? To get there, your hand, some people will tell you, you know, the hands, hands on the belt, hands on the belt, hand, hand on the collar here. Some people will tell you, put the hands on the floor. Some people will tell you, put the hands on the pant and the collar. But the knee on the belly is just this. You're gonna, you're gonna have your foot off the ground and I'll show you on the other side in a second. The knee on the belly is pushing down on the diaphragm, right? Or the knee on the belly is pushing on the sternum. Sometimes, if you have some brutal people, the knee on belly is actually up on the throat, right? But typically, you have a knee on belly, your foot is off the ground. I'm just gonna back up a little bit and show you on the other side. So my foot is not resting on the ground. This is giving him a break, or them a break. And my foot is not staying up high by his head so he can grab this, grab my leg in, push me in and tip me over. I'm gonna put my foot out here at a little bit of a distance. And I wanna have this foot up against his body and off the ground, making them carry my weight, putting my weight driving straight down into his diaphragm, right? Having the knee over here helps us get into the next position, which is mount, right? From in here, you're controlling, you're moving around. We'll get into what happens when you have knee on belly. We do have a kind of a short knee on belly where we put our knee right on their belly button. And that's to get them to give us a certain response. Typically, if we have this in here, they're gonna, they're gonna respond differently. And again, we need to make sure we're providing the, the, the dummy with the reaction that we're looking for. But to move into the fifth position, which is mount, um, all you're gonna do is take this knee and drive down to the ground. Some people put their hands on the ground, 
Some people keep it on the chest. It depends on how much this person's moving around, right? Sometimes you need to base out here. Sometimes you're, you're grabbing on here and holding. Sometimes you can just drive it here and flip it over. Again, we'll get into those specifics when we get into the knee on belly section. But the, to move into mount, mount just looks like this. Some people just call this the mount. Now you can have the mount or their feet are tucked in. You can have them crossed. But typically you're in this, in this fashion on top of it. You'll have high mount, bring up higher, bring the knees up, bring their elbows up higher. <clears throat> and again, we'll get into the basics of mount when we get into the mount section. So the next position we want to get into is the technical mount. We've created a dilemma either they're going to try to try to roll out of this or they're going to try to push down and do something in this way to get onto their side. So again, I have to move this person onto the side. Technical mount looks like this. If your foot is out here, you're dragging it into the belly. On this side, this leg is running parallel to their, to their back, to their spine, right? And you're not up here like this. You're gonna be down in here, you're gonna be moving around. Again, we have techniques and submissions from that position. So that's technical mount. The next position is back mount, and that's going to look like uh, either belly down, because if they're in technical mount, they decide they're gonna roll, right? And now, we're, now they're belly down. And so we have back mount usually hooks in. If you're doing for, uh, for scoring, you have to have your hooks in, right? You just have to have your hooks and control. The other back, back mount is from in here. In here. Back mount. Again, back mount looks like this. In here. We're not crossing your feet down low. Again, I don't have a problem with crossing feet up high, up in here because they can't lock it. But we'll get into one if you have your feet low, why this is a bad thing um, when they're low. Crossing them high uh, is not as bad, but down low there is an ankle lock. And again, that would be a technique for him. It's a little harder for me to get him in, but um, I can show you that technique still. The last position, which I said earlier in the video, is probably one of the more defining positions for jiu-jitsu uh, is closed guard. Now, if you remember the very first move was closed guard but top. This was me earlier in the video. This was on the dummy. But now I'm in closed guard. You can see my, my legs are above his hips and they're locked and they're closed. This is position number eight, right? We've gone through seven positions. This one being the last position and probably the, probably the most important defining one of, of jiu-jitsu, not just sport jiu-jitsu, but for self-defense. And, um, and really, this is, this is the one that, uh, if you say jiu-jitsu, this is the one that should be, you should be thinking of. Jiu-jitsu has, you know, some, you know, chokes. Um, MMA has strikes in this position, but to always get back in this position, you can always get in all kinds of uh, safety holds. Uh, there's lots of transition into sweeps. There's, you know, we have submissions. You get the submission from here. There's tons of, of ways to get to your favorite uh, position and, um, and scoring. So, Again, those are the eight positions. Now we'll run through those positions. Uh, and we'll break them out and kind of give you details of, of how to get into position. What are the key components? Each, each, each uh, of the eight positions have controlling points. And um, we'll go over those right now.